Hello, welcome back to the shop. My name's Jamie. I have a collet closer, or at least part of one. It came with my lathe. And I don't know, I'd like to get it operational, but it's missing some parts. And today we're gonna make one of those parts. This is a little bit of a complex project. So we'll see how it goes. But here's the schematic of the collet closer. It's this piece right here. This is an indexing collet adjusting nut. And I'm missing that. And so I want to go ahead and make one if I can. I have this piece of steel that came off of a bulldozer, I think. It's like part of a hydraulic ram. It's almost the right size to fit in there, it might be a whisker bit small. So I'm hoping that after going through this whole process, everything actually does work. I think it will. Um, but I wanna, again, if, if nothing else, I'll be able to test and, and try out a lot of techniques and skills along the way. And if I find out that I need to make one that is about a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch larger, then I'll know how to do it. And the second time around will be much faster. So this is not wasted time. Uh, regardless. But to turn this into that gear uh, is going to take a lot of different uh, operations. The primary uh, part of this is making some internal threads because this piece, this gear, this indexing gear, will mount onto the spindle from the outside and I need to get it to thread onto these, onto these threads here, onto the spindle. So the first thing I'll be doing is boring a hole through here, making some internal threads, and then making sure that that fits on there. And once we do that, then we're going to work on bringing the outside dimension to size, and then talk about how we're going to make an indexing head, basically a gear, on the, on the back side. So... Lots of neat stuff, and hopefully by the end of this thing, I'll have an operating collet closer. All right, my first order of business with this piece is to cut those internal threads. So we'll be doing a lot of work here, coming in to bore that out. Uh, the One of the things that I can't do, if this is the gear end, where the gear indexing head portion of the, the work will be, is I have to leave this as large as possible. So I don't want to do any work to this piece of it, but I want to make sure that it is uh, true as can be. And so I've got the dial indicator on here. And as I rotate this around, I'm about one thousandths of an inch of run out. The old me would have set this up on the four jaw and tried to work that thousands out to get it down to within a few tenths. The last video that I did where I really measured the precision of this machine made it very clear to me that if I'm working within thousands of an inch, I'm in pretty good shape. So I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna say that this is locked in nicely. It was pretty quick to do. Um, I've got it here in the in the three jaw with one thousandths of run out here on the outside. I feel pretty good about that. So let's just check it here on the, on the far side. And I'm getting the same thousandths of run out. So um, again, feel good about this setup. Now let's get to drilling the uh, boring out the inside.
At this point in the operation, I have this interior diameter at about, uh, I think it's 1.36, uh, which is enough to slide over the, call it closer, uh, rod. The next part, and so we're going to leave kind of the back portion of it. Actually, I'm going to come in um, one and a quarter inches and bore this out to 50 millimeters. And that's where we'll do the internal threading and the rest of the dimensions uh, we'll figure out after we get that done. Okay, so I'm looking for between 1905 and 1916. One nine one one. One nine nine five. One nine oh nine five. One nine one one five. Good. So we're in that we're in that range. Great. So now I need to create a thread relief here on the back side of this internal thread. So I have this kind of elbow cut into a piece of a high-speed steel. Uh, it's like a boring bar, uh, but I've gave it some more relief so that it can kind of get back and in there. Let's see how this works. That is the sound of the bottom hitting the diameter. So I have to, I didn't raise this up. This is a, a shorter piece of high speed steel compared to the bit that was in there before. So I need to raise this up so that this is more level with the center line of the cut.
The setup we've got here is I have the carriage at zero on this indicator with just having touched off. I have my compound at zero and I'll use this as I uh, measure it as I pull it in towards me for the depth of cut or the thread thread depth. And I've got the gears all set to 1.5 millimeter pitch. Once we start it, we can't stop it as far as disengaging the, the lead screw. So we'll do a scratch pass, take a look and see how it, uh, see how it goes. scratch it, but we're going to start the muscle memory. So I'm going to move the carriage in, drive it out. Bring the carriage back to zero. I'm going to bring the depth in just another half. I just want to get a scratch pass here so I can check. I'm going to drive it in. forward sorry move the carriage forward drive it out okay looks good so we'll just do this process a few times. Carriage back to zero. Let's take a couple thou. And here we go on the way back in. three this time and drive it in. Move the carriage in, drive it out. I'm saving you the full speed or the actual speed version of this process, but I recommend you check out my last video which is cutting metric threads on an imperial lathe. And I go through the process of um, how to do that kind of step by step. And I've gone in almost 20 thousandths. And my dis difference here uh, looks like it's going to be about 40 thousandths. Major diameter. Stand by. Just around. Okay, so from 20 to 40 is the range. Hardly feels like threads at this point. All right, let's go another five. And we'll do a couple of, uh, we'll cut this and try spring pass, see how it looks. if we are in the ballpark and we are not 
Where are we? Yeah, we're getting close. Barely going to start. Okay. We'll keep going. Almost starting. So what I've taken out of this video is the multiple times that I've had to go through and continue to cut and cut and cut to get my test piece to thread into this, you know, more than a third of an inch. Um, and I'm skipping over that part to save you the monotony. Uh, but coming up here in a minute, you know, we'll see what the true cause of that problem was. Um, but this is starting pretty well now. I'm going to give it another couple of passes and see if we can get it to kind of roll right in there nicely. All right, let's try this again. It's really good and then it kind of gets caught up so we get about halfway and then it starts to bind all right a couple more spring passes i think we'll have it all right let's see Good, and then it caught and it catches. So I'm noticing as I'm bringing the carriage into the work that I'm coming off of the zero by about four or five tenths. So this time going through, I'm going to kind of use the carriage uh, knob to try to keep this closer to zero as we're coming in because I'm finding that the threads, the, the test piece won't thread in the deeper it goes. I've got a feeling there's some deflection, the carriage is moving or something. So I'm gonna to try to offset that as I drive in. I could really feel a difference there. All right, come on, let's see. Ah, there we go. That's it. All right, that was the issue. I was getting I was getting a fair bit of deflection and the carriage was getting kind of pulled in. Now, that could also be that wear that's in my ways that I pointed out in that last video. So the key for me here was as I was bringing the carriage in, as it was driving in, I had my hand on the carriage to kind of keep against those forces to keep myself on zero here. And that's because for about 30 minutes or more, I've been just doing spring passes and taking deeper cuts to no avail. But I happened to notice that that gauge was moving and that was the key. All right, that's good. That part of the project done. So here it is day two and it dawned on me that what we're dealing with yesterday is just backlash four or five thousandths of backlash. So I wish I would have learned that earlier, but I guess experience is a better teacher.
Regardless, doesn't it always feel good when, very rewarding when things thread together. All right. So this indexing gear is going to screw onto this part of the spindle and it'll do so after the door is closed. So there's a couple of measurements that I need to pay attention to here. One is how far out the spindle will be so that um, the gear will clear the cover. And then also how wide uh, that gear can be so that it'll fit in the channel. Um, there's a, you know, the cutaway here so that it'll fit there. And then ultimately, you know, the old one had, you can see these set screw marks and I'm not sure how they operated it because I can't see maybe with an Allen wrench up here on the top, something like this. I guess that's probably how they accessed it. Yeah, that's probably how. So I could try and replicate that same thing. So for the width, um, when I when I look down inside here, and I'll show you a picture of that now, um, it needs to be a slightly smaller diameter than these locking rings here. And so I'm looking at, you know, those are currently at two and three quarter inches. And I'm going to probably do these. I'm going to start mine at just about two and a half. Because uh, looking in here, two and a half inches would be, would give me enough clearance so that it'll spin and not rub into the door. As far as the distance, so if I take this flat edge here and go to where it's going to mount, that needs to be at least uh, 1.9 inches. So we're going to get this guy So the plan is to take this diameter down to, what did I say, two and a half inches. And we're going to bring this, we'll bring that diameter in this way at least uh, 1.9 inches, probably two inches, give ourselves a little bit of room. Then we'll have you know, the main part of it. And from there, I can decide just how thick the gear portion needs to be. So I've got my two inch mark off here and I've decided I'm going to start bigger. So the diameter we're going to bring this down to is 2.65 inches. So we're going to take 350 thousandths off, which will be 175 coming in. I've zeroed out my cross slide. Now I have not had great luck with this style of cutter. I'm going to try it again, see how it goes. and see what it's like cutting through into this piece of unknown metal. So I'm either not getting the right angle I know I've cut this, this product before, so I'm going to try a bit that I have had good luck with. stringy. 
it's got decent color, but it's just not popping off the way that it should. Let's try maybe a little slower. Yeah, I mean, the string on this thing, this is, I don't know if you can see this, but this is three meters long. So we don't want that. get this chip to break. I'm going to run it by hand instead of running it with the carriage and see if I can get a better sense for how it's supposed to cut. So slower seemed to make better, um, actually, let's see, you know, I was getting some better break off, but I'll keep trying at it and I'll come back to you and let you know what we worked out to get. All right, so I'm taking about a 40 thousandths depth of cut and going pretty slow and it seems to be making chips as opposed to strings. Let's try it again and see, now that we're on camera, whether it still works. could never quite solve the chip problem. It turned into a lot of strings that I was just really careful to control, make sure they didn't get too, too much. And we're at uh, 0.264, so we're good. ready to take this out of the chuck. It is still warm. It's been about five or ten minutes. This guy is still very warm. I have my threads cut. We did our through, our through hole. Threads are cut. Threads work. We have the edges chamfered. We have the diameter. That's the first thing we'll check. That's not a critical measurement, so we'll pop this off and then See if it fits. Okay, so we're gonna pop this guy off. And let's see. Let's come over here and check it out. So remember the idea is that it threads onto this. 
the door will be shut. All right, success. So we have clearance this way, and we have clearance around the outside edges. I feel like this is a good stopping point for this video. I've actually run out of memory space on my phone, and so I'm sort of forced to cut it off here. I've been taking the videos lately with a GoPro. Hopefully you've noticed improved video quality, but it also means larger file sizes, so it's getting a little bit harder to have the longer videos and edit them on my phone. So this video is coming in around 30 minutes. And in order to get it processed, I needed to, to cut it off here. So to not leave you totally hanging, I'm giving you a sneak peek here of a next video where we do some milling operations um, on the gear and get it ready for install and operation. Thank you very much for hanging in there, watching my videos. As always, I 100% appreciate every comment. Um, I look forward to learning more from you, my viewers. And until next time, good luck in your home projects and uh, hope to talk to you soon.